Sprint Racing. Who's going to take the title that Briggs won last year? The start of the new season. And all the talk is about the new Audis. Terry Moss and Chris Aberdeen won the first two rounds. Rounds one and two at Kailami. The big question now is can the cars do it all over again? We're looking at the Audis now. Let's certainly look as if they can do the job. Racing is underway in round three of the AA Fit Care Super Touring Championship and Terry Moss has gone off to a flyer. Michael Briggs was slow off the line and short under the is trying to find a way past in the BMW Viro car. Race camp action from Julia Bailey in the Monaco Camry and Aberdeen Briggs and Thunderlinda are line of rest with Redco Bend up ahead. Aberdeen had the inside line and Briggs and Thunderlinda were squeezed out. Bailey also took advantage of the inside line to get past Thunderlinda who has Grant McCleary on his outside in the second Opal Vectra. sliding their way through the S's and it looks as though Moss, Aberdeen and Briggs are starting to edge away from Julian Bailey in the Venonta Toyota Camry. The Enviro car BMWs of Van der Linde and Baird are tucked in behind the Toyota and Grant McCleary is looking for a way round Dion Joubert in the Motorplan BMW. McCleary is on a charge after losing ground on lap one but at the front of the field Terry Moss has a five or six car length lead over teammate Chris Aberdeen. A determined Mike Briggs is sticking to Aberdeen for all his worth. The Opal Vectra is tucked in behind the Audi's rear bumper and most the successful driver in touring car history in South Africa is fighting to stay with the Audis. Early problems for Class B runner Nico van Mensburg, who is into the pits in the Hillbank Nissan Centra. In Class B, Charles Wilkin got the drop on pole man Hein Luttigan and is out in front in the Bank Pin Toyota. Luttigan is second with Dave Repsold third in the Automark Toyota and George Bezadenhout fourth in the Nissan Engine Exchange Centra. Bezadenhout is driving with a broken foot and is experiencing some discomfort as we go in car with Craig Baird. Grant McCleary has got past Dion Joubert and now has the New Zealander under pressure as they break for Honda hairpin. McCleary has squeezed past Baird who looks to have a problem. It's probably tyres that are starting to go off. And Dion Joubert has also closed in on the New Zealander along with Henny Grunewald in the Scania Audi Quattro 80 who has also decided to join in the fun. Terrific race cam shots from Baird's BMW and Viro car. And it's all happening around the New Zealander as Dion Joubert and Henny Cronenwald jockey for positions. Baird is going to let his teammate through, but you can bet your boots he won't offer the same courtesy to Cronenwald. The three cars are locked together down the main straight, and Cronenwald can't find a way through on the inside. The two BMWs have Cronenwald boxed in as Grant McCleary slides through Repco Bend. McCleary is up into sixth place in the Opal Vectra. McCleary is in the points, but now he has his sights set on Sean van der Linde and Julian Bailey, who are still running fourth and fifth. problems for Craig Baird, who still has the two BP Nissan Centras climbing all over him. Voss and De Villiers have done a good job for the Nissan team, and it must only be a matter of time before they get past Baird. Sean Van Linder in the second BMW in Virocar also has his problems. Grant McCleary has worked his way steadily through the field in the Opal Vectra and wants fifth place. McCleary put two wheels on the dirt at Goodyear, but he is up alongside the BMW on the main straight, and Repco Bend is going to be interesting. There is slower traffic at Repco, but Briggs in third place is through, and McCleary has the inside line advantage over Van who is up in the fifth place. He's had to work for it. Grant McCleary has had to play second fiddle to Mike Briggs during his stay at Opal Racing, but this has been a spirited drive from the former South African motocross champion. The next target for McCleary is Julian Bailey in fourth place in the Minolta Toyota Camry, but race distance is running out on him. Cleary 
and Van der Linde follow Class B leader Hein Lattigan through the Honda hairpin, and there could be a grandstand finish for fourth place. An action at the Honda hairpin, two cars are off the circuit. That's Dion Joubert in the Motorplan BMW and Henny Kronevold in the Scania Audi, and more action on the McCleary front. McCleary is challenging Julian Bailey for fourth place. The two cars touched on the main straight. Bailey is an experienced former Grand Prix driver, and he isn't going to budge. The Minolta Toyota Camry has the inside line, and McCleary has to tuck in behind Bailey and come up with another plan. Terrific battle between Bailey and McCleary, and a terrific scrap at the front of Class B with Hein Ludigan battling to hold off Charles Wilkin in the Bank Toyota. It's all happening in the closing laps at Aldo Scribanti. The next instalment in the Bailey McCleary scrap as the two cars come through Hangar Bend. It's heavy braking for Honda Hairpin, and McCleary is going to go for the outside line. McCleary is driving around the Minolta Camry on the outside. That'll give him the inside line for standing sweepers. Henny Cronoval goes for a more conventional approach at Honda. He slips through on the inside of Craig Baird. Cronoval picks up a place after his off road excursion, but this time McCleary has to get the drop on Bailey. The Opal is in the inside line for Goodyear Corner, and there isn't much that Bailey can do about it. And McCleary is into fourth place. Into the final lap, and Terry Moss leads from Chris Aberdeen. The two Opal Vectors of Mike Briggs and Grant McCleary at third and fourth. Also in the points are Julia Bailey and Sean van der Linde, with the two BB Listen Centres seventh and eighth. The Rossman's Audi team is going to pick up its third AA Fleet Care Super Touring win in a row. Terry Moss is going to win in front of his home crowd, and Chris Aberdeen will take second place. So it's the four-wheel drive out here of Terry Moss and Chris Aberdeen, first and second here, with Opals in third and fourth places. Drivers there, Mike Briggs, the defending champion, and Grant McCleary. Aberdeen in pole position for round four. Let's join the action. Round four of the AA Fleet Care Super Touring Championship, and are we going to see another Rothmans Audi juggernaut? One of the Opal Vectors that's been left behind at the start, it's Grant McCleary, who put up such a brave fight at the previous race. And Henny Grunewald in the Scania Audi has made a demon start and is up into sixth place. It's Elof Street on a Saturday morning, but Chris Aberdeen has grabbed the lead from round three winner Terry Moss, with Mike Briggs into third. Julian Bailey is fourth in the Minolta Toyota. To Camry ahead of Sean van der Linde and Grunewald has made a terrific getaway and is ahead of McCleary and Craig Baird in the second BMW Enviro car. Through the Honda hairpin for the first time and a slight change in the Audi script with Aberdeen leading Moss. Mike Briggs is third and the reigning AA Fleet Care champion must be sick and tired of seeing the back end of the Rothmans Audi Quattros. Briggs has won more super touring races than any other driver but has only tasted victory once at his home circuit. an awful lot of horsepower thundering down the Aldo Scribanti main straight as we go to race cam action with Julian Bailey. A former works driver for Toyota in Britain, Bailey has signed for Toyota South Africa and the entire AA Fleet Care Series in South Africa this season. Behind the Minolta Toyota Camry, Henny Kronenvold has made a great start in the Scania Audi 80, but already he is under pressure from Grant McCleary in the Opel Vectra. The Opel is tucked right in behind the Audi, and McCleary will be thinking about where is the best place to have a go at getting past Kronenvold. There are no team orders in the Rothmans Audi camp, so there could be fireworks in this race. Duncan Foss is taking on Craig Baird down the main straight as we go to race cam with third place Mike Briggs. The two Audis are pulling away from Briggs, but Moss is in trouble at Repco Bend. Moss was laid on the brakes and has gone farming. There is drama for the Audi camp. A mistake from Terry Moss. The Audi is back on the circuit, but Moss is down to fifth place behind Aberdeen, Briggs, Van der Linde and Bailey. Terry Moss will be kicking himself, and now he's got some real racing ahead of him as the field streams through Hangar Bend. Foss has got past Baird and is taking on Conovals at the Honda hairpin with Terry Moss already putting the pressure on Julian Bailey. This is the battle in Class B with Charles Wilkin leading from Hein Lattigan. The Class B drivers are fighting for 200 rand a point in the total challenge with Dave Repsold third and George Pesaino fourth with the class starting to come alive this season. Back to the great leaders in the Conti S's with Chris Aberdeen out in front and Mike Briggs isn't letting him get away. Terry Moss charge continues, and now Sean van der Linde has problems in the BMW Enviro car. Moss is right on van der Linde's tail, and he'll have a go at getting past at the Honda airpin. There he goes, and Terry Moss is up into third place, with Julian Bailey also closing on van der Linde. Moss has gone from fifth to third in a lap and a half, as we go to race camp action with Sean van der Linde. A pub of dirt, and van der Linde is in trouble! 
van der Linde has gone scooting off the circuit at the Stanic Sweep, the end of the road for Sean van der Linde, and there is the stricken BMW Enviro car of Sean van der Linde. It's getting pretty hectic again in midfield. Clay Bayer, Dion Joubert and Janelle de Villiers are involved in a terrific tussle. Here they come through Hangar and into the braking area for the Honda Hairpin. Drama as de Villiers trying to sneak through on the inside and there was a heavy contact between BP Nissan and Motorplan BMW. The Beamer isn't going anywhere with the wheels at those angles. Now more race cam action from Julian Bailey in the Minolta Camry. Bailey is up into fourth and trying to close the gap on Mike Briggs ahead of him. Back to the Honda hairpin and it's also the end of the road for Janil de Villiers. The two BMWs and the Nissan are out of the race and add to that list Anthony Taylor in the Castrol Toyota Camry. Chris Aberdeen is still the race leader with Kerry Moss up into second place and Mike Briggs third. The Bailey Chronovolt boss battle is hotting up with the British driver under some serious pressure from Chronovolt, who has looked impressive in last year's factory car. The Audi Quattro 80 also has the advantage of four-wheel drive and is race prepared for the Scania team at the Audi Motorsport headquarters in Newton Hague. Chronovolt is climbing all over Bailey and is past the Toyota. It looks as though Bailey missed the gear and that is a rare mistake from the British driver. Bailey will have to work hard to catch Chronovolt with race distance running out, and Bailey is in trouble! <laughs> Julian Bailey and Duncan Foss have tangled and both cars are off the circuit. Round four of the AA Fleet Air Super Touring Championship is turning into a battlefield as Duncan Foss heads back to the fray in a slightly battered BP Nissan Sentra. Another look at the incident from the Foss race camp. <laughs> Fleet care clerk of the course, Steve Harding, may want a word or two with Duncan Foss over that incident. But the Nissan is still going strong as Foss laps Hein Lattigan, who has dropped a long way behind Class B leader Charles Wilkin. This time it's Chris Aberdeen taking a flag to flag victory with Moss in second place, then the General's two men next up, and Mike Briggs netting third there. The second of the Opals up there in fourth with Henny Grunwald and Duncan Voss making it the top six. And six of the championship with Opals, Briggs and McCleary on the front row. All set for round five of the AA Food Care Super Touring Championship. The Opal Vectors of Mike Briggs and Grant McCleary are on the front row. And as the lights turn green, it's Sean van der Linde already trying to sneak his way through. It looks as though McCleary might be able to outdrag Briggs into the S's as we go to race cam with Julian Bailey. lost two places as first Dion Joubert and then one of the Nissans slipped past the Minolta Camry. They're now riding with Mike Briggs in second place as the field charges through the Sabat sweep and onto the long straight named in honour of the late Tony Viana. Opal Motorsport are one and two with McCleary leading Briggs with these cars hitting around 260 kilometres down the kilometre long straight. Sean van der Linde is tucked in behind the Opal Vectorers with Chris Aberdeen fourth. Dion Joubert is fifth, Janelle de Villiers sixth, and Bailey is still seventh. Charles Wilkin is at the front of the Class B field. More race cam action from the Minolta Camry. This is the Continental Complex with a short straight leading into West Bank Corner. Grant McCleary has opened up a slight gap over Mike Briggs, but van der Linde is still tucked in behind the Opals. Chris Aberdeen has made up a place and is through the Continental Complex. West Bank and the right hander leading onto the pit straight, but the four-wheel drive Rothmans Aldis will have a slight advantage over the two-wheel drive cars. McCleary leads the charge towards Castrol Corner. Chris Aberdeen may have got a toe from Van der Linde and could have a look down the inside. Smoke was pouring from the right front wheel of the BMW Enviro car under braking and Van der Linde could have a brake problem. Aberdeen had the tighter line but it's still behind Van der Linde as they cross over the subway and head for Continental. This is where the Rothmans Aldis will use four-wheel drive to the best advantage but Van der Linde is going to make it difficult for Aberdeen to find a way around the BMW. Van der Linde has lost a little ground to Briggs as they head towards the long left hander at West Bank. There was no sign of any smoke from the front of the Beamer under braking for West Bank, but race order is unchanged. Carl McCleary leads from Opal teammate Mike Briggs. Sean van der Linde is third, Chris Aberdeen fourth, Dion Joubert has Janil de Villiers right on his tail in the BP Nissan with Bailey and Duncan Foss seventh and eighth. The 
GP Nissans are very quick in a straight line. And Villiers is starting to put pressure on Dion Joubert in the Motorbrand BMW. This could develop into a good contest as De Villiers follows Joubert through the S's and into Sabat Sweep. Charles Wilkins still leads Class B in the bank fin Toyota Corolla, but Hein Lattigan is skiding his way through the field in the SAC motor-built BMW. Lattigan had to start from the back of the field when the BMW stopped on the warm-up lap, but is already challenging Don Brains in the Opel Astra for second place. This is turning into a crackerjack race, and Chris Aberdeen in the Rothmans Audi Quattro has the best seat in the house to keep tabs on the battle going on ahead of him. Goldfields Raceway used to be a problem circuit where tyres were concerned, but the track was resurfaced last season, and tyre wear is not the it was a couple of seasons ago. Through the Sabat sweep, G-forces build up and the drivers take a pounding. But exit speed is critical for the long run down the one kilometer Viana Strait. And Mike Briggs got the perfect toe from Grant McLearians going for the lead. Briggs was sucked along by his teammate, whipped out of the slipstream and is into the lead. Sean van der Linde was also having a look at getting past McCleary, but his still third and one open ahead of him has been replaced by another. Race leader Mike Briggs is the most successful driver in South African Super Touring history, but he hasn't won a race since September last year. He campaigned in the British Touring Car Championship toward the end of last year, and the Rothmans Audis have dominated so far this season. That domination could end here at Goldfields Raceway, with Chris Aberdeen fourth behind Briggs, McCleary and Van der Linde. Jadil de Villiers has taken the BP Nissan Sentra into fifth place, and here's the battle for the lead in Class B. Charles Wilkin and the bank fin Toyota Corolla are now under serious attack from Hein Lottigan, who has worked his way through the field in the BMW. Lottigan has the inside line as they head for the subway and the Continental Complex, and we could be in for a change in the Class B lead. There goes Lottigan and Cam Wilkin fight back. These two have wins apiece this season, and this is a terrific race cam action as Hein Lottigan moves into the lead in Class B. He might just have got a little tap from Wilkin in Continental Corner, but the SAC motor-built BMW is in front, and Lottigan has had to work hard to get there. Race distance is running out, and this battle is going to go all the way to the wire, but the fight is on at the front of the field. This is the penultimate lap, and race leader Mike Briggs, Grant McCleary, Sean van der Linde, and Chris Aberdeen are tied together. A lap and a bit to go, and we're in for a grandstand finish, and Aberdeen is going for third place. This is the section of the circuit where four-wheel drive works best, and Aberdeen sneaks up on Sean van der Linde. Now the race is on, and Rothman's Audi hopes of making it five out of five this season are still alive. Briggs leads McCleary and Aberdeen is up into third. Van der Linder is fourth, but Chris Aberdeen has to find a way around Grant McCleary before he can attack race leader Mike Briggs. The Opal Motorsport drivers have worked together all weekend, and you can bet your life McCleary is going to use every stalling tactic he can call on to keep the Audi behind him. Aberdeen has to be right on McCleary's tail when they hit the main straight. He's got to get a toe from McCleary down the straight, and it's all up to who is laid on the brakes. Into the S's. Aberdeen is well placed. This is where he needs to be, but the Opals have the edge in straight line speed. Aberdeen could be losing out. They're on the ragged edge, but the Opal is creeping away from the Audi. Aberdeen isn't close enough for the toe as the race leaders bear down on the Class B front runners, Hein Lattigan and Charles Wilkin. McCleary moves onto the outside line and then ducks back to defend the inside of the corner. Aberdeen and Van der Linde are so close to McCleary you can't see them behind the Opal. to go. Aberdeen and Van der Linde will have to come up with a quick plan. With Grant McCleary there to ride shotgun for him, Mike Briggs looks to have this race in his pocket. There are two battles going on out there. Hein Lattigan is still fending off Charles Wilkin in Class B, and race leader Mike Briggs and his Opal Motorsport teammate Grant McCleary are working together to hold off Chris Aberdeen and Sean Van der Linde. Two corners to go, and Briggs looks safe. This is West Bank with Chris Aberdeen still trying to scheme away around Grant McCleary, who's using every bit of circuit available to him. McCleary fainted for the outside line of the right-hander, leading onto the pit straight and then ducked back on the inside. It's all over. Mike Briggs will win the dash to the flag with McCleary second and Aberdeen third ahead of Sean van der Linde. Confirmation of that result, Briggs, McCleary, Aberdeen, Opal, Opal, Audi with Sean van der Linde in fourth place. The start of round six. Briggs and Bailey perilously close together as they come into the corner here. Behind Aberdeen and Moss and De Villiers all tangled up together and effectively out onto the grass. 
So Aberdeen trying to restart there. Four-wheel drive helping him down the straight. They come again. And an impossible maneuver there by Julian Bailey. He sees them rubbing wings. Bailey is off in the biggest possible way and out of the contest. Opal leads BMW right behind it. And Briggs there slides. Briggs loses it. Off onto the grass, facing the wrong way. Now stuck in the middle of the track. So up then to take the flag, Sean Van der Linde winning round six. Duncan Voss, Craig Baird, Henny Gronvold, the next three. Wienick pulled out of the cars at Killarney. Rounds nine and ten of the championship. This is how it looked as they went into it after eight rounds. Moss Aberdeen, McCleary, Briggs in fourth place, last year's champion. And the cars came towards us here, really going hard. BMW having a good run, but the checkered flag out, and it's a win here for Aberdeen, Bailey and Briggs next up. The start of round 10 of the championship, however, featured this huge coming together, which saw the red flag as the cars come down. You can see a very short opal indeed, with cars everywhere all over the track, but that's a rebuild job for Mike Briggs. The restart with Mike Briggs, Duncan Voss and Henny Crunnevold missing from the grid and Sean van der Linde starting from the pit lane in the BMW Enviro car. Away they go and it looks as though we have a clean start this time. Race cam once again from Janil de Villiers and would you believe it, here we go again, something broke on that car and de Villiers has been punted as the Nissan dived across the centre of the circuit. It looks as though it was Charles Wilkin in the Bankfin Toyota who hit de Villiers. All is not well with the Toyota and that is cruel luck for Wilkin who is a strong challenger for the Class B Championship. There is suspension and severe front end damage to the bank thing car, and that looks like the end of the road for Wilkin. The Nissan is out of the way against the safety wall, and there won't be a red flag this time around, with the two Rothmans out is out in front of Julian Bailey and Grant McCleary. Aberdeen leads Moss, Bailey, McCleary, Schubert, Taylor and Baird. And what drama to get underway a race that takes us to the halfway stage in the AA Fleet Care Super Touring Championship. Kalani is packed to capacity and the huge crowd is getting more than its fair share of action. Race cam pictures from the back of the race leader Chris Aberdeen's Audi and the pattern is the same as in the early stages of round nine with championship leader Terry Moss ahead of Julian Bailey in the Minolta Toyota Camry and chasing after his teammates. Terry Moss came to Kalani with a 10-point lead over Aberdeen in the Drivers' Championship, but that lead has been cut to just one point. Another win for Aberdeen will see him move into the championship lead, but with no team orders in the Rothmans Audi squad, this is going to be a fight to the finish. Past the start-finish line for the first time, and there's nothing in it with Julian Bailey right on Moss's tail. Grant McCleary and Dion Joubert are also in touch with the race leaders, and this has the makings of one heck of a race. The Rothmans Audis have won seven out of nine AA Fleet Care Championship races this season, with Audi dominating super touring racing throughout the world. In a controversial move, the British Touring Car Association has slapped an additional 30 kilogram weight penalty on the Audis competing in the British Touring Car Championship. But as yet, the South African Touring Car Association has not gone that same route. Only if the FIA, the world controlling body, recommends that Audi be penalized the extra 30 kilos will the South African cars be forced to carry the additional weight. Here's a turn up for the books in Class B with George Bazzetti leading Hein Lathigan with Sean van der Linde and remember he started from pit lane working his way through the slower traffic. This is the battle at the front of Class B and Hein Lathigan is going to try the outside line of the hairpin. This is going to be interesting and that was entirely predictable. The Class B leaders have got themselves into a terrible tangle. Now who can get going first? Once again, Aberdeen took a slightly defensive line into the hairpin. He knows Moss won't let him off the hook. Good overtaking spots are few and far between. And Kalani and Conti Corder at the end of the start finish straight is one of them. And Aberdeen knows it. He'll be expecting Moss to have a look at the right-hander at the Kalani Oval and at the hairpin at the end of the back straight. This is the last lap and there could be some late fireworks. Chris Aberdeen leads Terry Moss on the last lap of round 10 of the AA Fleet Care Super Touring Championship. Julia Bailey has been in third spot since the start of the race with Grant McCleary fourth and Dion Joubert a workmanlike fifth. Once again, Terry Moss closes up on Aberdeen under braking at the oval, but Aberdeen simply sticks to the racing line. And other than resorting to punting his teammate off the circuit, there is just no way for Moss to get past. In the early 
early stages of this race. It looked as though it had the makings of it developing into a humdinger. But Rothman's Audi simply took control and shut out the opposition. Aberdeen has kept his cool under pressure from Moss and Julian Bailey in the Minolta Toyota Camry has always been just that little bit too far behind to try and force a mistake from the Audi pair. McCleary has been in much the same position as Bailey and Dion Joubert has soldiered along and will be more than happy with a fifth place finish on his home circuit. So the Audi steamroller rolls on with Aberdeen in the lead once more as they came up to the flag. So Aberdeen the winner with Moss in second place, Bailey third, Rob McCleary fourth, Dion Joubert in fifth place and Craig Baird sixth. It went to Kailami for rounds 13 and 14. Anthony Tanner's Toyota took his first pole position. Five second board is up waiting for the lights to turn red. They are red and green they are and a good start from Anthony Taylor as well as uh, Grant McCleary. Grant McCleary on the right hand side of your screen a great start as he got the line uh, into the first uh, of the Penzoil of the sweeps. Yes he has indeed. Mike but McCleary takes the lead from Anthony Taylor. Dion Jubei starting into the third position followed by, um, by Briggs, Michael Briggs. Going into fourth position, and Ron McCleary has taken the lead from Anthony Taylor and Dion Joubert as they go through Nashua. The first five cars are very close together as they come towards us. That's McCleary followed by uh, Taylor. Then we have Dion Joubert, Michael Briggs having a look on the outside. That looks like uh, uh, Sean Father Linda also going to the uh, Goodyear corner in the uh, BMW Enviro car. The first five cars already opening up the lead towards the first of the uh, Nissans, and that's uh, Janine two Audi Quattros. They have not had such a good qualifying time because they were on uh, harder compound tyres and it's going to be a question to be answered in this race. Are they going to be able to work their way through the field as the race progresses because their tyres are going to uh, last longer? Yes, and up, up into Westbank for the first time and he's brought McCleary in the Opal and he's up front. He had a magnificent start. Anthony Taylor also got off the line quite well. He was in pole position. He's nine second. He's been chased hard by Dion Joubert, Michael Briggs, there's Sean Van Linda down through Haveline. You see, this is uh, Grant McCleary. He wants to win this one. Oh, he locks up a wheel. See the spoke come off the tyres. A lot of pressure there for Dion Jubeir from Michael Briggs as they come out of AA Bowl. Head down towards AA King. You see Michael Briggs looking the inside of Jubeir. Can he make it? He's on the inside. It's going to be tight. But that's McCleary. He's up front in the Opel. I mean, he's gone off. It's Jubeir's gone off. Jubeir on the outside. He's gone off. He's going to get the motor pan BMW going. I don't think so. I think he's stuck there for the race. That's Dion Jubeir on the outside as he came through on the outside of Michael Briggs into uh, AA kick and there's our class B class there's Michael uh, Dion's getting going he's going to get through onto the road yes and, and Dion Jubeir's back on the road but hard on the brakes again by uh, McCleary and there we go that is Julian Bailey trying to go through on the inside he does so a little bit of a nudge there Julian de Villiers gets pushed there was the outside and uh, Sean von der Linde taking that position from him as well so Julian Bailey up into fifth position that means that uh, Junior de Villiers is back into seventh position. No, he's actually lost out on the two Audis as well. He's down into ninth, yes, and the Audis working their way through. Watch these Audis towards the end of the race. The other two-wheel drive cars, the tyres are going to go off. The Audis on very hot compounds at this stage in the race. They won't be as good on the handling, in the handling stakes as the, the other cars, but as the race progresses, those four-wheel drives will come on. They don't use the tyres as quickly as the rest of the cars. Looks as if Moss has got a problem. He's certainly slowing down. He's not going as quickly as one would anticipate. And Moss uh, driving the and I think he might have a problem, but that's Beard, that's New Zealander. He's been, he's been the champion in New Zealand for three years in touring cars. He's trailing now, right in there behind Julian Bailey, the next Formula One driver, who's driving the Minolta Camry. And then it's Aberdeen, the man who's second in the championship, Chris Aberdeen in the Rockman's Audi. It should be Janelle Davis riding behind him. Yeah, there's Janelle, just ahead of Terry Moss, followed by Duncan Force as they come down into Goodyear Corner. And you see the four-wheel drive. It's very good in the brakes, and he'll tighten his line. Not he doesn't quite seem to have the power to come through on the inside on acceleration. Van Linda right in behind Taylor. Taylor locking up the wheels once again, but Briggs is also getting in there. Just talking of Julian Bailey, he has the ability, he runs the car into the corner in a certain way that he unlocks the dip. By that he means that instead of having both wheels driving at once, he's able to get just the wheel that's carrying the weight. Carrying it. Oh, and there's, there he goes, Van Linda. He's through on the inside. Van Linda, Ruger Stettner, he's on the inside. He's got fast. It's, look, here come Briggs. Briggs also looking at the inside of Taylor. Yes, and looks like Briggs has got the, the, uh, the jump on Taylor. They're neck and neck as they come down towards the Penzoil curve. And, oh, great driving there from Taylor. Can he hold on? Taylor's going to try and hold on. Uh, Briggs comes through. Briggs has made it through. And, yes, he's come through. But now Taylor's got problems because he's got Julian Bailey right in there behind him. Julian Bailey in the Minolta Camry right in behind the Castrol Camry of Taylor Ward. Off goes Van Blake. He just spins out and in against the wall. Well, we're talking about the tyres and the factors that uh, make a difference.
difference and of course there we see that uh, Chris Aberdeen is absolutely closing in on these uh, Julian Bailey going through on the inside of his teammate Anthony Taylor Anthony Taylor definitely must have a problem either brakes or tires or something else but uh, he's definitely falling back and he's he just let uh, Julian Bailey through there to try and score uh, maximum points uh, possible for uh, Toyota Craig Baird coming through on the inside. Craig Baird taking uh, Anthony Taylor on the inside. And what a pity for the young man who had pole position for the first time in his uh, super touring car career. And now he's fallen back to it must be something like sixth position. And then here comes uh, Michael Briggs. He's got Julian Bailey who tucked him behind him as they go up into Nasher corner. Through Nasher now lifting the wheels there. And then we, we've got this big battle coming through. It's Terry Moss. It's Craig Baird. It's Chris Aberdeen and Anthony Taylor. And Julian Bailey looking to the inside there of uh, Michael Briggs as they go through Goodyear sweep and down towards Goodyear corner, lifting that back wheel. But uh, Sean von Alinde is right there on the tail of Grant McCleary. There's less than a car length between them. Yes, he certainly closed up. It was Connor 9 at the start of this lap. But Grant McCleary, I think, has driven exceptionally well. He's driven very intelligently. I think he, he got away, he, he made the gap, and he settled down and conserved his tyres. Sean von Alinde, I think, was doing the same. He just stayed pressures on and he's driving very very hard to catch and i don't know if he's going to get there but that's our second and third and fourth place man that's michael briggs in the opal followed by the monotonic camry of julian bailey there's terry moss just coming out of west bank heading down Havelin and craig baird is holding off happening oh and high modify on the class bean leader has spun i don't know where that is but he spun looks like it might have been at aa kink it looks like it's going to be a victory for grant McCleary in the opal sean funnel on the outside he's going to try and pop through in the inside there he closes, he tightens up, he runs up very nicely, he's on the gas, they're coming down towards the line, it's Grant McCleary in the Opal, Sean van der Linde in the BMW next up. Opal's revenge then here, through they go, McCreary, van der Linde, Briggs, but it's van der Linde in pole position for the next round. Five second board is up, waiting for the lights to go from red to green, red they are, green they are, and a great start from Sean van der Linde as well as Grant McCleary and Pion Jumeir. Pion Jumeir has a great start, but it's got to be Sean van der Linde taking the lead and Grant McCleary next to him, but uh, Dion Jumeir has a better position as they go into the first of the uh, Pennzoil uh, sweeps. It is indeed Sean from the Linda, Dion Jumeir, Grant McCleary, then we have Terry Moss up in fourth position. Michael Briggs, and somebody's off that is, uh, that's uh, Charles Wilkin. Charles Wilkin, that's uh, bad news for him. He was second on the grid in the club being field. Look at Terry Moss, is looking there for a way past Grant McCleary, and he's got him. Yes, he's got him on the inside, and Terry Moss is on a mission. Terry Moss is on a mission as he moves up into third position, going into the first of the Rothmans S's. It's still Sean van der Linde, Dior Jubert, and then it is Terry Moss, Grant McCleary, and uh, Craig Day. Sun is setting in the west, as you can see the shadows are getting very long and hard on the brakes by uh, Michael Briggs. He's got Julian Bailey on his tail, and he's got to watch out that he uh, doesn't overcook those tyres too early in the race. This is a 12-lap race. They've already done two and a half, two and three quarters and coming up to finish lap number three. The gap in front was 1.1 second between Van Linda and Dion Jubeir. As they come through, we'll give you the gap as they come past us. It was 1.1, it is now 1.2, so there's nothing in between these two. I think tyres are really going to make a difference in this race again, Dave. Oh, that certainly is what is going to happen. The tactics there as they now start spreading out. There's Aberdeen, he's second in the championship. So in the championship is the Rothmans Audi. There's the Audi. Uh, the Camry coming through, that is Julian Bailey. He comes through the inside of Briggs and Briggs retakes him on the exit. Good bit of driving from, from Briggs. That's Craig Baird. And yet there's Briggs on the outside. And what's going to happen is they come down to Pennzoil. They just touch Briggs, just touching the uh, Bailey. Same thing, I am here. And as Bailey got the edge, I think Briggs on the better line as they come down through the Pennzoil curves. Yes, he's on the inside. And I think Michael Briggs is going to hold him out. Yeah, they're just bumping. And that's allowing Anthony Taylor to look at the inside of his teammate. They come through Nasher, and look at this, this is tight racing, this is exciting stuff. There's Aberdeen, he's in the, on the inside now of the Castrol Camry of Anthony Taylor. And these two teammates fighting has allowed the, the uh, Aberdeen car to get closer, and I think that he just, uh, Anthony Taylor decides to come in, in behind Julian Bailey, who was going to look at going around the outside, getting the better line into the next corner. Briggs just locks up a wheel as he goes into the Castrol corner. But out in front, the BM for the letter, certainly moving away and they appear to be getting a little bit closer to Dion Jabert. Terry Moss bringing them through Grant McCleary and here we come Julian Bailey is now ahead and so is Anthony Taylor ahead of Michael Briggs then we have got that looks like Duncan Foss then Janiel de Villiers as uh, they coming into our picture now here comes Julian Bailey the two Camrys coming through ahead of Michael Briggs race
Spanish leaders now up to Penzoil, up into Nashua Corner. As they come into Goodyear, this is the dice for second place. This is where the action that all is going to be. is Dion Jubert in the BMW Motorplan car, just ahead of Terry Moss, the championship leader in the Rothmans Audi, as they come down through the Rothmans S's. They're going to head up the hill, up towards West Bank, and the other, up they come, and McCleary's got a safe gap. Beard's dropped back a little bit. Looks like George Beside just held him off up on the shelf. Terry on the wide line. He's going to try and come through on the inside. Can he do it? He's going to certainly try. His best opportunity comes through. Is a slower car and he's been bucked. And that is it. That has cost him this, uh, the second place. I don't think he's going to get to two terms once again. As they come down and McCleary's come through, that's cost uh, Terry Moss a place. That has cost Terry Moss a place. And you see McCleary on a, a very tight line as he tries to dive through the inside. Can Moss come through? Moss has got a very defensive McCleary just ahead of him as they come up towards the AA kink. And that was unfortunate. You see, through goes McCleary. Moss is going to try. This is where Moss is going to try. You see them touch. They just about touch McCleary on the inside line into Gustafa for the last time. And here comes Baird. And Moss has got problems. Moss has got problems. He gets bumped out there by Baird. As Baird just sticks his nose in. And through comes the leader. The winner, it is Sean Van der Linde in the BMW in Pyrocourt. Van der Linde from pole position taking the win here. Schubert next up. McCleary next. Terry Moss hanging on well. Craig Baird and Julian Bailey. Into round 17 and 18 at Kailami. Sean van der Linde in pole position and the BMWs looking really good here. And they're waiting for the lights. And let's see who's going to get off the line first. The BMWs are normally very quick off the line, but so are the Audis. And a good start from Sean van der Linde, Craig Baird, and they all get off. And you see Aberdeen trying to go through on the inside of uh, Taylor as they come over the start finish line, down towards Pennzoil for the first time. But it's BMW 1, 2, and 3. And we've got. Uh, Aberdeen right on the inside, two wheels on the dirt of Taylor as they come down towards Nasher. That was through Penzoil on the straight now to Nasher. And uh, Taylor not going to give him an inch as they go into Nasher now. But uh, really up front, it's all BMW. First, second, and third, it's Bundelinda, Baird. And then we got Jubey. And on the outside, here comes uh, Grant McCleary trying to challenge on the outside. Then it's Julian Bailey, Taylor. Aberdeen on the outside. No, that is Briggs, Aberdeen and Moss right in there. And it looks like the it is the, is that uh, Duncan Force. I'm not too sure if that is Duncan Force or Janelle de Villiers in the BP Nissan. But it's Van der Linde, Craig Baird, Dion Jubey. And it's Dion Jubey in third place in the BMW motor plan car, followed very closely by Grant McCleary, who's come on in leaps and bounds this year. And this is one of the Nissans that he's off. One of the Nissans. It's, uh, yes, it could be Janelle de Villiers. It looks like Janelle de Villiers has gone off. Julian Bailey in the Minolta Camry takes a tighter line in. And uh, there is Michael Briggs now on the inside. Anthony Taylor is pushing them a little bit. You see them touch as they come out. And is Taylor going to get in first? This is going to be close. That's not where you want to come through together. And we'll pick them up as they come through. It is, looks like Taylor's gone through. Then it's Aberdeen on the inside of Briggs. They doesn't make it. Terry Moss is also there. That is the champion, the reigning champion, Michael Briggs. And there's the two Rothmans out. He's right in behind them. But it's still Van Linda. Van der Linda by, followed by Beard, Jubert, McCleary, Bailey, Taylor, Briggs. And he has the two Audis. Oh, Duncan Foss has gone through. Duncan Foss has gone through on both the Audis as they come down. And it looks like it's Moss ahead of Aberdeen. Moss leading Aberdeen through Penzoil at the end of the first lap. And this is going to be tough racing. The Rothmans out. He's going to have to do something. We know that they are quicker as the race progresses. Their tires don't go off as much as the two-wheel drive cars. And that will bring them closer towards the end. But here we see there is McCleary followed by Bailey. And this is a big dice going on. Duncan Force, that's him in the BP Nissan centre. He's going very well. He's closed right up on the tail of Michael Briggs, who is also right in there with Anthony Taylor in the Castrol Toyota Camry. And we've got the first of the Audis, and that is Terry Moss. And we know he's a fighter. He's a fly, and he's going to be trying very hard indeed. But the four-wheel drive doesn't use its tyres as much as do the single, uh, the two-wheel drive, like the car in front of us. That is Funlander, the man in picture. He's leading the race. But the... Uh, I don't think anybody's going to catch Sean here today. He's been so quick in qualifying. He's really got his act together. And qualifying is one thing, because qualifying is a mind game. The race is obviously very different. In qualifying, you've got to be totally perfect. But this is the Class B cars. The Bankman Toyota uh, Sprinter of Sean Wilkin, they've got this car going so well. And when you look at the championship points, at this stage, he's still 21 points behind. The man in front, that's Hein Lardefan. That's the car in, in picture, the built car, the B built BMW. But Hein has won nine of the races this year and Charles only six. But in the last, at Kyle Army, you can see that Charles has won two of the five uh, of the six. Three have been won 
by Heimlaterpin. But in the last four races, Shaw Wilkin has won three of the last four races. And I think that's, that makes the difference. They've got this car going so well. And Shaw is now growing in confidence. He's happy with the car. And he's outperforming the BMW. But you can never write off that man, Heimlaterpin. The BMW has come through. Those are our leaders. There's Dion Jubin in third place. Grant McClary and Julian Bailey certainly closing up. Certainly closing up. There's Anthony Taylor. Michael Briggs and here comes Moss has got through and so is Aberdeen. They've both gone through on the Nissan as the Nissan got off. Looks like the Nissan might have gone wide. He's back on the circuit here. He went off on the wide, maybe squeezed a little bit as Aberdeen came through on the inside of him. That's not a place where you want to be taken on the inside. And we see Moss going up now and let's see what sort of times they're doing. Julian Bailey, they're all done their quickest 46. Uh, Aberdeen's done a 47.05. Moss also 47.3. So they're not they're not going quicker than cars in front of them yet. In actual fact, they're falling, be, they're falling back and they're getting further and further in be behind but let's see towards the end of the race they should be at least comma seven comma eight of a second quicker than the cars we see in picture just on the uh, better tire line but here we go down in the class b battle uh, as they come in towards us and diving through there uh, and was Nico van Rensburg and he's just gone straight off at Gestet in the corner that's one place you don't dive through like that to get to put brakes on there is Grant McClary in the Opel Vector really putting a lot of pressure on Dion Jubert as they go up the hill up towards West Bank and Julian Bailey doesn't have to be asked the second time he's taking the invitation and he's starting to close up while these two are fighting up front oh Nick oh great bit of driving there from McClary I don't think he's made it he certainly looked at the inside he tried very hard he popped through and he's going oh and he's two of them off that is Duncan Force Duncan Force Christoph and Blake was the other one involved there yes they uh, as the class A cars have passed in the class B cars and Grant McClary is all over the back of Dion Joubert and uh, that's brought them an Alfa Camry a lot closer and they've got to watch Julian Bailey because if either of them make half a mistake or while they're fighting each other they've got to be careful because Julian Bailey is going to pop through and who knows he might just take the third position away from both of them and that is Brock McClary and how he has improved unbelievable the man has smoothed out so much he's always been smooth but he's really he seems to have just put it all together this year and he's out driving Michael Briggs by quite a long way Dion Joubert Brock McClary there's Julian Bailey up and here's Moss in sticks he's chasing an extra point he's chasing the Toyota the Nolte Toyota Camry they're on their last lap and that is Terry Moss for the last time through AA Bowl and he's really putting on the pressure is Moss I don't think he's going to get to Bailey but he's trying hard there goes our second third place man that is Brock McClary in fourth and then it's the Minolta Camry in fifth we're waiting now for the leaders. It should be Sean Van Linder any minute. Coming out of Gestetner for the last time. We'll see him coming to picture. There he is. And this is Sean Van Linder. And Sean Van Linder comes. He's going to win this one. He wins it from Craig Baird in another Enviro BMW. BMW's back with a vengeance. One, two, three. Van der Linder, Baird, Schubert. McCleary next up. Hanging on in there from Bailey and Moss, the top six. Waiting for the lights. About to change. And a great start from Sean. But also Grant got off the line very well and we see the cars coming through no incidents this time but it's Sean Van Linder Grant McCleary followed by Beard and then it's Dion Jubey as it all comes streaming down through Pennzoil for the first time oh there's Briggs and Bailey having an almighty tussle as they came through Pennzoil on the circuit there we see that's Duncan Force Duncan Force came through in the BP Nissan followed uh, there's Aberdeen with right on his tail he's got Chanel de Villiers so they've got through the first few corners down towards Goodyear sweep for the first time. Sean Van Linder in the BMW and Vira car going away, followed by Grant McCleary in the Opel Vectra, and then he's the teammate of Van Linder, Craig Baird, the New Zealander, up in third place as the Fox B cars come streaming through up to the shelf at West Bank for the first time. Sean Van Linder. Oh, and McCleary's lost the tail. He's locked up, he lost the tail, and Baird's going to come through. That's a great bit of driving. He held on to that nicely. Craig Baird trying to come through the inside, and Grant has just held him out. Good bit of car control there from Grant McCleary. I don't know if he's a patch of dirt or what happened, but he lost the tail but held on to it magnificently. That's the Opel Vector in second place. But here come the BMWs. Craig Baird, the New Zealander. Dion Jabeer in the motor plan BMW right on his tail as they come out of AA Bowl. And this is going to be tight racing. AA Bowl towards the AA King. Uh, Sean Van Linda certainly opening the gap there with Grant McCleary holding off Beard. Here comes Beard once again. He goes left and then right. Comes from the inside. These two touching and Beard gets through at Gestet in the corner. I don't know if Grant Mr. Gear or lost something there because he's down to fourth position because DeAndre Bay got through as well. Well, certainly things are changing there. It's the rear wheel drive BMWs, the front wheel drive Opel, and most of the others, the four wheel drive uh, Craft Terry. But the rear wheel drive is considered to be easier on the tyres, and this circuit has certainly got very, very slippery indeed. And the big sigh from most of those team managers now is that their cars have more or less got safely around the circuit a few times. They've done two laps, there's 10 laps in all, uh, 12 laps in all to do. Sean van der Linde 
Yeah, well positioned there. The biggest thing they want to do is keep Terry Bossy scoring points all the time. At the moment, he's got two points where he's sitting there now as he comes past us with the, just ahead of Anthony Taylor. And then that Class B battle goes on a little bit further behind. And uh, this is looking back. There's Richard Sorensen in the uh, Opel Astro going, and there's lots of action down here in this class. There's Lada Car leading. There he is in the Buick Motors car. Charles Wilkins seems to have uh, vanished somewhere as they come up the hill towards us. And getting closer is Terry Moss on a charge. This is coming up to the end of that four. We've had, uh, we've had, uh, this is the coming up to the third of the distance. And here comes another, and Briggs is going for it. He's going on the inside of Anthony Taylor. He's got him. Nice piece of driving there. Oh, he puts him onto the sand, or he went onto the sand as Briggs took his line. So Briggs has moved up a place here now. As they come across the line, his next, uh, his next goal is going to be uh, Julian Bailey. Von Linda has just done another quick lap for 145.814. And Mike, let's just see what uh, Kateri did at 146.3, Moss 146.5. So they're really just holding station to this stage. Five laps gone onto lap number six. And there going wide there was that Grant McClary again. So Grant has gone wide coming through Nasher corner. And that's allowed Terry Moss to get through. And he's now chasing after Dion Jabez. So uh, Terry Moss getting through there. Grant going wide. And this uh, now Chris Aberdeen trying to get uh, past Duncan Foss there to chase up to Michael Briggs as uh, we got smoking him away. That's Sorensen. That's Sorensen's car. Right, sorry, Richard Sorensen, he was lying down in 18th position. He was fourth in Class B, but that's the end of his race. And when we see this Beard Moss duel coming up, remember what happened at Tyler at Killarney in Cape Town? Beard and Moss had an almighty battle. They really drove magnificently, both of them. They were going around the corners next to each other, side by side. And are we going to see something similar right now? Well, it looks like that could be happening there. Basil has uh, now taken a close, tighter line as they go through West Bank Corner. Was Craig Beard, and here comes Terry Moss. As they come out, and can he get up alongside? It's now going to be for breaking down there at the AA Bowl at uh, Nico van Rensburg out there, and it's unreal how these Group A cars went flying past him. Uh, Nico van Rensburg out there in the Hill Bank car, and Terry Moss looking for the way through on the inside as they come out of the AA Bowl. And now power their way down. Grant McCleary closing on Dion Jabeer as well, and oh, nearly losing it there. Got him. Got him. Got him. He's through. That was the mistake he was waiting for. Terry Moss put so much pressure on Beard. Beard made a half a mistake, lost three car lengths, and through came Terry Moss. And this is what he wanted. This has now changed the whole uh, championship scene for BMW. Great Beard just twitching a little bit. I hope he hasn't damaged the car. But Terry Moss will pick up six points for this, and six points will mean that the difference between himself and Sean Funland, who's leading the race now, will be ten points Correct. if they finish like this when they hit Killarney. And I think if they go down there with Moss with ten points advantage, I don't believe that he can lose the championship but anything can happen in my race and this is our happen. leader this is Sean van der Linde and is he flying Sean van der Linde is really doing a great job of work for BMW the Enviro car you see him going around and holding off Terry Moss the gap is 4,66 seconds this is Moss now in the Rothmans Audi and look at the sort of pressure he came right back from sixth place on the grid he's worked his way through and Terry has driven brilliantly in both races here today but what a great drive from the man Craig Baird tried his best so did Dion Joubert to hold him out but they just couldn't do it on the day. Grant Pascal, uh, Grant Pateri made two mistakes today, and that cost him two positions. Every time he made a mistake, it cost him a position or two. And right in duck behind, uh, that is Grant Pateri. Then we've got the Monarchy Camry of Julian Bailey. He's down in sixth place. Then it is Michael Briggs in the Opel Vector. Chris Aberdeen in the Rothmans Audi. This is Sean Van Linder going through in the Enviro car. He's the man leading the race with his African flag helmet. And next to will be the man who's going to finish second, or should finish second, Terry Moss. Yeah, he certainly he looks like he's going to do it. 320 horsepower, they say, is under the bottom of that BM. Most of the others have got about 290, 295. So he's got a lot more horsepower than the others, but he's used it well. Sean hasn't put a wheel wrong. He's been in front, clear roads. Here he comes. Two wins for the day. Sean van der Linde picks up 18 points for the day. But Terry Moss certainly is just 10 points in the championship. Here he is in second spot. BMW back with a vengeance. Van der Linde, Moss, Joubert, McCleary, the top four, then Bailey and Aberdeen. Aberdeen picked up some points because Ben was excluded. Nevertheless, it was Moss only needing points to confirm himself as champion going into the final round. He did that at Kalani. So we come to the final championship points with Moss, Aberdeen, Van der Linde, the top three.